What's up skeptics, Thomas Westbrook here. I just released my first ever documentary style video on Holy Kool-Aid about the psychic sting op called Operation Pizza Roll. I highly recommend that you go and watch that first. This is more like bonus content. This is the full uncut interview that I did with the absolutely incredible Skeptical Inquirer columnist Susan Gerbic, who went undercover with Mark Edward to catch a cheating celebrity psychic red-handed. Given the nature of the documentary style of this conversation, I basically just told her to talk and I sat back and listened. So if it doesn't really feel like a supernatural back and forth conversation, that's probably why. Enjoy. I had done stings in the past with uh, chip coffee and uh, with other psychics in the same method using Facebook. And we had never caught a hot read. And the New York Times reporter said, you know, I need to get a hot read. And I said, okay. Um, and a friend of mine in the LA area, she said, hey, this psychic just came across my Facebook feed. He's going to be in Hollywood in two weeks. You want to try to do something with this guy? And I'm like, sure. I'd never heard of him before. I didn't research him before. Uh, I just immediately tried put the put the uh, sting together using the same methods I'd used in the past. And he just happened to be the one that we, we got because he was in the right place at the right time. But I knew nothing about him beforehand. The way we're trying to catch a hot read is to absolutely prove that either the psychic is able to read Facebook pages using the dead or he was able to or he is actually reading Facebook pages. And we had to make it sure that there was no way that he was getting the content from the person who's attending the event's brain. So the people who attend the event do not know what's on the Facebook pages. That's so it's it's blinded from it's like a double blind. So when we decided that we were going to do this um, Thomas John in Hollywood, or I believe it was Hollywood, and we said, all right, who wants to be in the team? And people, I just threw that out on Facebook and several people said, I do, I do, I do. I couldn't tell them who I was doing. I just told them it was a psychic. I said, it's going to take about two weeks. We're going to be lying to the psychic. We're going to give the psychic money and it may possibly cause people in the audience to believe further because when we go to the event we're not going to reveal ourselves as being skeptics we're just going to look like one of the crowd and agree to everything that the psychic says so I told the team I said if you're not okay with that then you need to not be in my team but if you're okay with that and you know that ahead of time you know let's let's go forward so people got into the Facebook group which was about 10 people and it was a private Facebook group and I called it Operation Pizza Roll then um, I told him what the plan was, is that we were going to create fake Facebook pages. Well, actually, we already had fake Facebook pages that have been around for a long time. We just had to change the content and, and add stuff to it. So I explained, you're going to create these pages and you're going to interact with each other for about 10 days. And during that 10 days, you're going to create a lot of different characters. Two of the characters are going to go to the psychic event. One is going to be myself and one of them is going to be Mark Edward. Um, I said, you are going to create a backstory that I won't know anything about and Mark won't know anything about. And then you just put it in. Um, you, you look like you're real people talking to each other. So they made another fake face, uh, another secret Facebook group. So a secret, secret group. And they called it Pizza Roll, Pizza Rollers. And those eight people got in there and they talked to each other and built these characters and they made them as realistic as they possibly could, interacting with each other and um, sharing pictures of puppies and uh, whatever. They wanted to look like believers. They don't want to look like skeptics. So those pages are not linked to anything and they're only in a little vacuum talking to each other. They're, they're all closed. The pages are all closed. So nobody outside of Facebook can see these pages. So what they decided is they put together a backstory for myself and for Mark. And they said that I'm Susanna Wilson and I'm going to attend this event with my husband, Mark Wilson. And we're going to, I want to see my, I want to contact my dead twin brother, Andy, who died of pancreatic cancer a couple years before. And I'm really um, sad because I've been having a lot of dreams about him and, it, you know, twins are really close and so on. And then Mark's story, they created saying that Mark had, um, 
didn't have a great relationship with his dad. And years ago, his father had died of heart problems. And now Mark's about the age his dad was at the time that he started having heart problems. So Mark's been really thinking about it a lot and having some tests done. So he wants to be in contact with his dad. And he's stressed out about these tests he's had. So that's all we knew. So when Mark and I went to the event, we're completely locked out of the Facebook groups. And that's all. So we're only told that little bit of information. Now, we didn't know if Thomas John was going to hot read us or cold read us or ignore us. We didn't know. But I purchased the VIP tickets. So we're in the very front of the audience. Um, there's maybe 50 people in the room. And we're sitting in the third row. So there's probably like four or five people in each row. And then there's an aisle. And then there's four or five people in the aisle in the row next to us. So it's pretty intimate. It's in a pub. Um, so there's food had been served and people had been socializing with each other. Um, Mark, it, Mark and I thought maybe we'll be cold cold reading will happen so what we did is we wore um mark is a very non-military kind of person he's kind of a hippie and so he wore a, a pin from the marines a big pin on his on his jacket and i'm you know born and bred in in um, america and my relatives are from slovenia so i wore a thistle pin from scotland on my jacket so the idea was is if he was going to cold read us he would probably pick up on Mark being a military person and that I would be probably have a lot of ancestors in Scotland, you know, some, because obviously I don't have a Scottish accent. So we thought, well, maybe he'll cold read us. So we went into the event and we walked in and I texted the um, pizza rollers and I said, I'm in the event. And they said, okay, great. So what they, and I, I might've even taken a picture of the event of the room and I texted it to them. And what they did is they turned around and went to the fake Facebook page for Susanna Wilson. And they uploaded the photo, I think. And then they also said, I'm at the event. And, you know, made some kind of comment like, you know, I'm, I'm really nervous. I'm worried that I'm not going to get in contact with my dead twin brother. So we go and we sit down. You know, we're talking to the people around us as best we can, you know, smiling at them and everything. And then... um the show starts so you still getting this okay <laughs> okay so then the show starts and thomas john comes out on stage well first his manager comes out on stage and she says how nice to see so many familiar faces here today and we're thinking ah familiar faces are in the audience today that's interesting and then i had been wearing a wire because we were recording everything from the moment we walked in but then she told, tells the audience, go ahead and record it, your uh, readings and stuff. They're so excited. So I pulled out my iPhone and hit record so that I'd have it recorded twice. Then, um, and so we had permission to record the, the, the readings, obviously. So we're sitting in the audience. I have Kleenex in my pocket, you know, and I'm really nervous and, and I'm just kind of hanging on Mark. And, oh, we wore wedding rings too, like we were married to each other, which we're not. So uh, she's so that she leaves the stage. Thomas John comes out onto the stage holding a microphone, and he stayed in that position for two hours. He never he only once got a drink of water. The rest of the time he was just there, holding this microphone and doing a, and very still and doing a reading. And he would like close his eyes most of the time, like he's really concentrating on hearing something. <laughs> and then he does a he gets a he does a reading for somebody way behind us and i couldn't see who the person was but it was spot on it was so spot on that we were really like uh-huh and mark's like yeah that's a little too too accurate and then the next reading is a woman that's sitting to to the right of us and she's wearing green and i talk about her in the article because she sat there and she got a reading that was accurate really really accurate and she's crying with the tissue and mark nudges me he says she's not crying and we're like okay so then thomas says i'm getting a twin uh, a brother who wants to reach out to his twin something like that and he and so i tentatively raised my hand you know i'm really nervous and they come down the aisle and they bring me the microphone and i'm like hello hi you know kind of really shy and nervous and he 
as you can hear on the audio, it goes on and talks about how I have a twin that wants to reach out to me who died recently, and I'm getting something in the stomach, some kind of, was a pancreatic cancer, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm dabbing at my eyes and pretending I'm crying, and Mark's fanning me with paper because I'm like supposedly really hot and just really nervous, and um then he starts telling me about things that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. You know, who's Maria? Um, who's Buddy? Um, different things. And, and we don't know what's on those fake bu- Facebook pages. We just know that we're trying to agree with him on everything he says. And it's really difficult. Um, and I'm sure it looked very suspicious to him, but he still went on. He gave us 15 minutes. And then he goes to Mark. And he talks to Mark about heart disease and how he's been, he had some tests done and he's really worried about the tests and how there was a lot of distance between him and his father, which is what we knew. Um, And then he goes into other things like who is Steve, who quit smoking. um, And, you know, Mark and I just had to kind of just go with it. We just said, um, Buddy is, um, my dad's nickname, my brother's nickname is also Buddy. Yeah, yeah. And Steve, well, there's, there's, you know, family friend Steve and, um, I don't know, uh, Maria? Uh, and then Thomas John would say, oh, is this his wife? And I'm like, or his girlfriend? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. Cause he kind of led me into saying the right answer. So he just, he, we went through that for 15 full minutes. Um, and then he left us and went on to do cold readings for, I think, maybe six more, five or six more people. And then the show is over. Okay, so then a woman gets up from the audience and she comes over to us and she says, oh, I'm so glad to see that you, you know, you claimed Buddy and you got a reading because I also have a dog that's a Buddy. And I'm like, oh, really? I said, didn't you also get a reading for right now? And she says, yes, this time my grandmother came through. I said, this time? She says, yeah, I I just did a session with him, like a, a small group of 10 people, and we all got an intimate reading. I'm like, oh, how nice. You got an intimate reading with him just a few weeks ago. And the same people came through this time, except now it's your grandmother's added to it. And I said, well, that's really interesting. Do the dead always just kind of always the same people? And, you know, I was trying to get some more information out of her. And she was just totally oblivious to the fact that she was really a hot read. Um, It's somebody he's known before. Or it's possible that maybe the spirits came through and told him, told Thomas John this exact same things he told, they had told him a couple weeks ago. I mean, that's always, I guess, a possibility. So then we go to our one-on-one because we'd paid $161 a person to go to this event. We got a book and we got a 20-minute um a meet and greet with him. So maybe 15 people or so went into this back room to meet Thomas John. He comes in and they'd already given all of us a copy of his book and we're all holding his book. And I took a couple pictures surreptitiously you know, of, the, of the room and I'm still trying to stay in character. And um, so Thomas John goes around to the people in the room and it's People are sitting on couches. It's a very casual place. And he goes up to one woman and he takes the book from her. And he, and it's the woman in green, the woman that he had given the reading to earlier that was perfect. And he takes the book and he gets this pen and she says, she looks up and she says, spell it right this time. Really? Spell it right this time? Well, it might have been like spell it with an E, not an I, or spell it with an I, not an E, something like that. And he said, okay. And he just kind of, signed her book and handed it back and everybody else in the room he had to ask them their names I thought that was really interesting nobody else seemed to catch it it was just like okay and then at the very end you know he's talking about how he's been a medium and how he found his gift and blah 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 and I raised my hand I said um are there any other mediums that you have you know you endorsed over the years the the people that you really look up to your your people that you think do a fabulous job and He said, well, there's this medium and that medium, and they're names I've never heard of. And then he said, some of my students have also showed great promise. And I said, oh, you have students? And he said, yes, I do. And he went over and he put his hand on the uh, woman in green and another woman that was in the room and said, yes, these are my students. I thought, hmm, 
the person you gave a reading to in the audience was one of your students. How very interesting, you know. And another woman too. And I and so she, he she might have been somebody he read also. I don't really remember. Um, and then we left. And then I'm texting the pizza rollers and I said, okay, who's Steve? Who's Buddy? Who quit smoking? Who's all, you know? And they were going through the um, the Facebook feed of that they had created. And some of these Facebook pages have lasted around for a long time. So there's other things that have been entered on them. Plus there was filler pictures. You know, they're putting pictures of a puppies and things, you know, just to make them look realistic. So one of the things Thomas John asked me was about Michigan. What is your contact with Michigan? I don't know. I said, well, we, um, yeah, well, we've had some contact with Michigan. He goes, did you live there? And I said, yeah, yeah, we've lived lots of places. <laughs> I don't know. And so when I asked the pizza rollers, what's this with Michigan? They didn't know what I was talking about. And so one of the people in the group said, wait a minute. And she went to one of those filler pictures that they had just inserted. And it was for Cornwall Park um, in some place in, in the UK. And um, so we Googled the name, uh, the park name, the Cornwall Park, and it comes up to a park in Michigan. So we think that maybe that's where he got the Michigan references that he Googled this random picture that was on the page for just no reason. Um, another thing that happened was the smoking one. And you might we, you, the audio talks about the smoking. So he says, who was smoking, 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 and quit? And Mark and I are going back and forth looking at each other. And he, he says, oh, that was my brother. And I said, and Thomas John got indigenous. Indigen- he got upset about that and he's like, no, not you, not you, the twin. And so I said, oh, yeah, my brother smoked and quit. And, we're, and we said, well, both of us, we had family members that smoked and quit. And Thomas John says, no, no, it's a twin. So my brother stopped smoking and I guess started up again, my invisible, um, non-existent brother, twin brother. And so... I asked the pizza rollers about that also, and they said, well, I don't know. Nobody put anything about smoking. And then they scrolled and they scrolled and they saw that Andy, who is my brother, the account they were using as my brother's account. If you look far enough back, there's a screenshot where he he had put one of those, uh, like, I'm now engaged. I'm not, you know, one of those life events. And he put quit smoking back in 2013. So... I guess that's how they knew that Andy had quit smoking is that it was on the Facebook page um, thing. Now, it's quite possible that that, um, Thomas John uh, has a spirit guide that can read Facebook pages, (laughs) I guess. I mean, maybe, maybe his dead spirit guide is reading the Facebook pages of the people of us attending. Or maybe somebody was just reading the Facebook pages and feeding him the information. I don't know. But um, all I know is that he, he, all the things he related to us in the, in the sting were things that were written on the, Wiki, the Facebook pages, were written on the Facebook pages. And Mark and I had no idea past the little bit we were given um, what could be on those Facebook pages. And then the last thing I should probably mention is that a couple days after the event, I hadn't mentioned Thomas John's name anywhere publicly at all. Nobody knew that except the pizza rollers and Mark. And we had said something about a psychic, but I don't live anywhere near LA. I'm a five-hour drive away from LA. So it wouldn't naturally occur to anybody that I would be in LA doing a, a psychic sting and, and connect Thomas John to Susan Gerbic. But when I had done the pizza roll, no, op, when I had done Operation Bumblebee with Chip Coffee years ago, I when I paid for the tickets, I bought Visa cards with no name on it and then used those Visa cards to pay for the the event. We, we went way out and over overthought it a lot. But with Thomas John, I put it together so quickly that when I got the money, I put it into my account and I turned around and bought the tickets using the Susan Gerbic. Um, I don't remember if it was PayPal or if it was Eventbrite, but I used it using my account. So uh, a couple days after the event, I received a tweet from Thomas John and the only thing on the tweet was a red heart. And it was from Thomas John to Susan Gerbic. 
And there's no way to have who to have found Susan Gerbic and connected her to uh, Thomas John or Susanna Wilson. There was nothing that existed. So either he was told psychically that Susan Gerbic and uh, Susanna Wilson are the same person, or maybe he just out of the blue just decided to text a heart to Susan Gerbic for some reason. I've never had any contact with him before. Or maybe he was looking at his PayPal or Eventbrite who purchased the tickets and he saw Susan Gerbic and realized Susan Gerbic might have been that Susanna person that was there and gave him such a kind of a hard time and he had a funny feeling about. And that's it. After Operation Pizza Roll, you caught Thomas John cheating a second time with his TV show Seatbelt Psychic. Tell me a bit about that. So this operation took a long time to, to come to fruition. Operation Pizza Roll started in March in 2017, and it mainly started because the New York Times wanted to make sure that they got a hot read, um, because you can catch a cold read on a psychic pretty easily, and I've done it many, many times. Hot reads are really difficult to prove. So um, in the meantime, we did an operation called Operation Peach Pit, and that was a different operation um, that I ran from Salinas that happened in Connecticut. And Kenny Biddle went and attended that one. And we did that so that we would be able to have the New York Times reporter attend every bit of the operation of the sting so that he could write notes and he could report back on it. So in the meantime, that was taking a very long time as well to to come to fruition. Um, that was January of 2018. So about a year later, um, back in January of 2019, I started thinking about um, I started thinking about Thomas John's um, TV show called Seatbelt Psychic, and this is on the Lifetime Network. What what was interesting to me is that there was videos up of it because it was an actual TV show, and the premise is, is that people get into his rideshare cab kind of thing, and he drives them around and gives them readings and talks to their dead family members and apparently he's not supposed to know any of the people in the in the car and I said okay I'm going to sit down and write an article for skeptical inquire about this and I got out all my paper and I got all my um, I got the videos off of Amazon I purchased them and I sat down and I started listening they're 19 minutes long but it took me over an hour to to watch one because you're constantly stopping it, rewinding it, looking forward, looking back, listen, you know, it was it was a very egregious, very time consuming thing to analyze, uh, looking for the wordplay, because these people are really good at their wordplay, the psychics. So the idea um about two episodes in, I thought, this is really odd. There's a lot of things that I'm noticing a pattern that is really kind of made me wonder about things. One of the first things I noticed that made me wonder is if he's picking up people in LA, like a Lyft or a or something like that, or a uh, Uber, which is what it's supposed to kind of feel like. He's picking up people not as a taxi cab driver, but as some rideshare off uh, um, rideshare kind of thing. Is the people got into the car, sat down in the back seat, and put their seatbelt on? And I'm watching the video, and there's at least six camera angles in there. So why did the people not react to the cameras that were in the car? Why didn't they say, what are all these cameras for? They never said that. So I thought, well, that's odd. Okay, maybe they're really hidden cameras, very small cameras. I thought, okay, well, they got really good cameras because the quality of the image is really great. Then I noticed that in one full shot, the person would get in, sit down, put their seatbelt on, he would pull away from the curb and you know maybe they'd say hi how you doing and then he'd drive away from the curb and he'd go and then he might have exchanged some pleasantries with him like how's your day great weather you know and then he would within a minute he would say by the way I speak to the dead are you open to getting a reading from me and the person would look really shocked like what and then and then he would you know, do his thing. And he would talk to them about their dead family members. And it, a lot of it was very accurate. Some of it was, you know, kind of vague, like cold reading, but some of it seemed to be hitting a little too accurate for me. And at no time did they mention a destination. And I thought, if you're in a ride share or something like that, somewhere somebody's going to say, I'm taking you to the Ritz or I'm taking you to Hollywood Bowl or I'm taking you where, you know, you're going to say something. 
but no destination was ever mentioned. And he didn't put any kind of information in the screen. You know, he didn't reach up and put, um, uh, record any, you know, put an address or anything like that. There was no exchange of anything. It was just get in the car, buckle up. Hi, how you doing? Car pulls into traffic. He starts talking to him about the dead. That's pretty much where it happened. Then the other thing that really caught my eye was it's a large, like a Lincoln town car with leather seats. It's very nice in the back. And there, there are three seats in the back. It's a bench seat. And the, if two people got into the cab, got into the back of the car, they always sat so that one was um, like in the door right as they got in and the other person sat in the middle seat. And I thought that's not really natural. I th- maybe if you're a couple and you're all in love and you want to sit and cuddle with each other, well, okay, I get that. But some of these people were not couples. They were like friends. And I would think that they would have sat so that they were on opposite ends of the seat right next to the window that, or even come around to the side door and open the door and got in from the other door. I thought that would be more natural. This was happening in Los Angeles, not in like, you know, it was uh, New York. It was, it was in Los Angeles. And I thought, that's really odd. Why is one person always sitting in the middle seat? And I thought, well, the cameras, that's the best angle for the camera because they could use a long shot that shows Thomas John driving and then you would be able to see the middle person in the seat and then you'd be able to see the other person. And if there had been another person on the other side, it would have been much more difficult to get all in one frame. So so I thought, well, they must be sitting in the middle seat because they were told to sit in the middle seat because that's the best angle for the camera. And then the last thing that kind of really said that this is really wrong, besides the fact that he was getting so much right, is that I really purposely looked at their clothing. And if you look at their clothing in detail, you know, you're really looking for it. There's no logos. There's no team mem- mentions. There's no little swooshes from Nike. There's no um, nothing. Uh, and they looked a little too finished kind of like the Truman show it's it had that look to it like their nails were really good and really well done their hair was just done I mean they wore casual clothes but I think if you were to pick up 10 random people in an in a room just somewhere you're going to see people with sports memorabilia you know with baseball caps with you know a, a baseball name on it or a football name or you know you're going to have a Nike something but nobody had them and that made me think that these were it was planted this way because it just didn't seem right nobody ever had bags like they'd been shopping and they you know they came in and here's all the bags and take me home and and i've been shopping all day there was never any bags for advertising it just looked a little too polished so then the what happened is a woman gets into the back seat and she's a woman maybe 50 and she said um you know she was very eager to you know, answer the dead stuff and all that. And he says, you know, you know, I'd like to get some something on on you better. Um, could you hand me something that is personal that I can hold in my hand? And she reaches into her purse and she pulls out a lanyard with a big plastic name tag that you would use at work. And she takes it and he puts it in his hand and he holds, he doesn't look at the name tag. He takes it and he puts it out, stretches it to the camera like this he straight outstretches it to the camera and in it's dangling the person's name in front of the camera on the dashboard. And I said, what is that? And I just froze the camera long enough to look at it. And I flipped it over and it's this woman's name and it's Wendy Westmoreland. I said, that's an interesting name. I'm sure that's an unusual name. So within about a minute and a half, I was over on her Facebook page. It's definitely her because I can see her face and I can see the face on her Facebook page, which was totally open. And I'm scrolling through her Facebook page and I notice that she's an actress. She's a part-time actress and she's been on the same network as uh, Thomas John, which is Lifetime. And then I'm scrolling through and I see that she has all sorts of actress, actors and actresses' friends and she has uh, joined the Actors Guild. And I thought, okay, she's an actress. Oh my gosh. And then... I said, um, and I'm looking through her Facebook pictures and I see that there's a photo in there of her brother who died probably in the 1970s and his name is Skip Skipper. And Thomas John had said, I'm seeing your brother Skipper and he's here with me. And so I thought, ah, oh, Skipper, aha. And also on her page, there's all these mentions of, she's sharing these memes that say, um, 
you know, if you've had a brother who's in heaven now, share this meme, you know, kind of thing. And I looked at her post and I have a nice screenshot of it. It says that the she posted this picture on her Facebook page far in advance of when she recorded the show for uh, Seatbelt Psychic. So, um, you know, so it was there on her Facebook page whenever she was in the cab. Let's, let's just say it that way, or in the ride share. Then, um, so then I got more curious and I went over and looked at IMDb and I realized the way IMDb works is kind of like a wiki. You have to actually go in and, and add the names of the actors and actresses themselves. Like you, uh, you are an actor and you go to the IMDb and you say, I was on this show and you put your name and your profile in there. It's not like the show goes and puts everybody's names that were on the show. Um, so there's only like six names in IMDb. And I was able to match up those profiles of those people to people who were on the show. You know, you could see the person on the show and you could look at their IMDb profile and it is the same person. And then I was able to look at their social media and I can see that you could see things they have posted were some of the things that Thomas John was talking about. Like, for example, one actress named Lisa Cash, she was very much into her dogs um, and uh, on her social pro media profile, IMDb, as well as Facebook, you could see pictures of her with dogs. That's like her life. And then so Thomas John, when he was contacting her dead family members, he contacted her dead do dog. So he was he was doing a reading for the dog and saying that the dog was telling her this and telling her that. And she was crying and all excited. Um, and then I also went and looked at the last of the credits for uh, Seatbelt Psychic. And what I saw was that um, Thomas John is supposed to be the only person in the show who's named. Everybody else is unsuspecting. And for some reason, they had a casting director and a casting assistant and a casting assistant's assistant. There was at least six people who worked in casting. So I thought, why would you need casting if you're not, um, if there's no cast? If you guys like what I'm doing with my channel, promoting scientific skepticism, critical thinking, and free thought, please consider supporting my work at patreon.com slash holy Kool-Aid. Thank you to everyone for your ongoing support.